Meanwhile, government bond yields across the two, three, five, and seven year space are all coming off record closing lows. And there you can see these shockingly low levels. As I mentioned, August has historically been the worst month for stocks. So what should investors do next? For more, I'm joined by Jason Brady, president and CEO of Thornburg Investment Management, and George Borey is head of credit strategy for Wells Fargo Securities. Welcome to you both, George. I'm actually going to begin with you. What do you what do you make of like how would you explain to a 10 year old? That's my that's my level here. What's going on with uh, with bond yields these days? Yeah, I think that's a great level to, uh, to to set for for bond yields, and that's really the way you need to be to be able to 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 explain them. Bond yields are very low for for a couple of reasons. Obviously, uh, the pandemic has put a tremendous amount of pressure on the economy. Uh, growth has slowed dramatically, and the and the central bank is easing policy. All of that has translated into a dramatic decline in yields. Uh, and I'd say, sort of looking forward, you know, the expectation is. None of those three, all three of those factors are still very much in place. And so for the uh, for the 10 year old, you know, yields are low, yields are likely to stay low. And um, you, know, you, you should expect relatively low returns you know, from your fixed income portfolio. That being said, yeah. you know, bonds as an asset class have done very, very well this year and have been kind of the anchor of an investment portfolio. Again, something that we would consider kind of going into the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, the price appreciation has certainly given you some returns. I saw that high yield bond spreads have absolutely collapsed, meaning you can make a lot of money that way. Uh, but Jason, yeah. let me turn to you because the, the landscape that George paints is one of a, a kind of slow, uh, difficult economy and one that some days we all experience. Then you have the other side of the coin, which is the ISM report comes out this morning pretty strong. New orders look really good. And it's hard to kind of reconcile that with with what with what the bond uh, yields are telling us about macro. So what would your advice be uh, for investors here? Yeah, sure. I think uh, George's statements are all correct. And, and what you've noted is that bond returns have borrowed a lot from the future in the context of now having very low yields and very low future returns. When you think about ISM, just remember that that's relative to previous periods. So we saw a huge decline and now a stabilization. So it's not necessarily a huge bounce back. It's coming back, but it's coming back slowly from very low levels. So still a lot of potential for volatility. And with regard to what's going on in fixed income land for credit, Still a lot of bankruptcies. We saw two more over the weekend. Right, and the retail space. I wonder, though, Jason, if big tech is also borrowing from the future. Let's show the market caps of some of these companies again. Apple's at $1.9 trillion today. We're within a couple of percentage points from it being a $2 trillion company. Microsoft at one6 Amazon's up there. Then Google. Facebook's not quite at the threshold yet. But, you know, the, digi the digitization, so to speak, of the economy has accelerated. And to some extent, didn't we just borrow that from the future? I think that's absolutely right. I mean, you remember when uh, companies struggled to get to that trillion dollar market cap? That was a sell signal for a company getting too big. Well, yep. we've blown through that a number of ways. You know, the thing to look at there is really PE, right? Uh, so if you think about the PE of these companies, they've grown dramatically. Now, of course, their earnings have also grown. And there are the companies that are obviously best positioned. You had a big segment on Microsoft, best positioned to take advantage of the digital economy going forward. But the reality is the P.E. is really an indicator of what an expensive price investors are paying. And with the very large market cap that exists for those companies, they are increasingly huge weight in major indexes like the S&P 500. So investors really need to keep an eye on that because if they buy broad based indexes, they're buying those companies by and large. Yeah, and I know telecom is one area you'd recommend as an alternative. George, let me turn back to you then. At some point, if the Fed is successful in kind of keeping the economy from worse outcomes, worse disinflation, they're doing as much balance sheet expansion as they are, shouldn't bond yields at some point stabilize, start to move back up or no? Well, bond yields, I think, you know, we did see a little bit of a downdraft over the last week or so, but they've been pretty range bound really since April. Uh, you know, the Fed intervened. They really kind of compressed volatility across the entire uh, fixed income landscape. And, and I would I would argue that the, the, the bond market's kind of in a wait and see mode. And, you know, this kind of the trajectory of the recovery, as we just described, you know, some of the numbers look good, but the, the actual trajectory is still still relatively gradual coming off of a very, very low base. Yeah. So to the extent that that recovery unfolds, 
then I think expectations for the Fed can start to dial back. But the Fed has told you they're all in. They're not moving away from an easing policy until there's clear signs that, number one, growth is kind of both accelerating and improving. And then number two, and I think this is very important, that these disinflationary and deflationary trends have started to reverse. The most recent data doesn't look great. Yeah. The forward-looking data, the expectations are for incredibly low inflation. So, you know, I, I think that, that that's sort of what we need to to watch as we go into the end of the year is that sort of a gradual improvement in growth and, and coming off of these very, very low kind of disinflation, inflationary numbers, you know, would be a good sign that the market can then start to take back some of these expectations for the Fed. But there's still a long way to go between now and then. And like you said, as you're talking, you know, people are channeling their money into relatively what are now defensive plays. And these are these mega cap tech companies, you know, that are now increasingly just a very significant uh, share of, of the U.S. economy and a very significant share of the way consumers uh, kind of are behaving these yeah. days. And that's the new world. That's yeah. the new world that and to some extent, that tells us that the market positioning can be considered defensive, even at all-time highs, uh, yeah. given those characteristics that you described. Gentlemen, appreciate it today. Jason Brady and George Borey for that chat.